Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, welcome, my friend. Woohoo! That's another mad video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, her, her. And you know what, my friends? It is with Engage New York. Or some of us know it as Eureka. Eureka! Eureka! Yeah, okay. Oh, my goodness. And look at this. What do we have here? Do we have. We do. We have a feature animal of the day. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. We have ourselves a stag. Yeah! Oh my goodness, you are one cool looking stag, you know. I I have a story. I was backpacking from Mammoth Lakes to Yosemite Valley. It's like a seven day backpacking about 60 miles. And you know, one morning I got up and I'm telling you, I looked out of my tent, the quiet, oh, it was, quiet. It was just serene being up there in the mountains. And there I saw a stag for the very first time walking down the mountainside. Man, was that quite a, that was quite a sight. Anyway, well, hey, my friend, hey, good to have you aboard, and thank you for triggering a little story there. But anyways, we do have to go ahead and focus in on our math lesson. Let's go ahead and look at our learning target here. It states, divide decimal dividends by multiples of 10, reasoning about the placement of the decimal point, and making connections to a written method. Woo! Yeah, Mr. War, are you sure this is fifth grade? <laughs> It is, my friends. It is. You know, this is going to be a really great lesson. At the end, I hope that you are going to see how this is connected with our learning target. And definitely dividing by multiples of 10 reminds me of the partial quotients from other math programs. Anywho, it looks like we also have a language frame here. It says, in order to solve this problem, I need to know blank because blank. Okay, language frames are great because you won't start your sentences off with the word like. You know, Mr. War, I like, like, like the seven is like a five, but no, we're going to move away from that word. Yeah, the word like is just a filler word, a filler meaning to just uh, fill up some space, like um, um, although I do do that a lot too. I say, okay, right, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> hey, okay, let's go ahead and get to the next page here. Okay, so here we're going to get started with our first problem of the day, okay? And we're going to solve this problem, but we're going to use value uh, disks, as they are called. I have 54 divided by 10. So what I'm going to do is I am going to represent that using value disks. I'm going to go ahead and start by representing 50. So here you can see I have my 50. Now I need to represent my 4. And I'm dividing by 10. So in this case, what I want to show is I want to show what happens to this number when I divide by 10. First, what I would like to do before I start dividing, present that this in unit form would be five tens and four ones. Then I would ask, what is one ten divided by ten? Yeah, you know, one ten divided by ten, because we're looking at our divisor as ten. One ten divided by ten is one. And you guys already know this. So if one ten divided by ten is one one, then what would five tens be divided by ten? We would end up with five ones, correct? So let me go ahead and represent that. I'm going to write my divided by 10 here because that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that number divided by 10. Though so we just said that would be five ones. So what I could do is represent that here with my five ones. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide my one one. So my question would be, so what is one one divided by 10? You may just think, oh, that's just like a fraction, Mr. War. That's one tenth. That's exactly, so that's one tenth. So let's go ahead then and show that. Okay, so now I have my four tenths. So if I look at my original problem then, I have my 54. So 54 divided by 10 is equal to five ones point four, five and four tenths. Now compare this problem here to 54 divided by 10. Well, thinking about 54, divided by 10. Well, first of all, the whole number is is less than the first one, the dividend. It's less, but we are still dividing by 10. Now, we've been learning about the powers of 10, so I can also say that 5 and 4 tenths is 1 tenth as large as 54, right? 54 is 10 times greater than 5 and 4 tenths. And also, it's interesting, here's our quotient from our first problem is now the whole because the first hole was 10 times as large. 
So its quotient then should be 10 times larger than the quotient of 5 and 4 tenths divided by 10. That makes sense? It's all about a power of 10. So let's imagine the numbers that we've been working with on that place value chart. We had our 54 from our last problem. When we divided 54 by 10, it gave us 5 and 4 tenths. So here's our 54. If we put this in on our place value chart, we have the decimal point right here. Now when we divided by 10, the digits shifted to the right based on this chart, giving us 5 and 4 tenths. Now when we took 5 and 4 tenths, here with this number, we have this new hole. We divide it by 10. What's going to happen to the digits on this problem? Aren't the digits going to shift one more time to the right because we're dividing by 10? The digits will. Now keep in mind, sometimes we've learned that the decimal is what moves. So moving the decimal to the left or moving the decimal to the right, it's just the opposite if we say the digits. Here in this case, we could say since the decimal was here, okay, after the 4, and now it's before the 4, that decimal point moved to the left. It did. But the decimal point moving to the left is the same thing as the digits moving to the right. So you just need to make sure that you're really clear about that. So here we divide by 10. Yeah, one more thing's going to happen. We have our decimal point. Sure enough, the digits are going to shift again to the right when we divide by another 10 because that's going to give us 54 hundredths. And again, if we do that one more time, okay, oh, forgot to put in my divided by 10. Let's sneak that in there. You didn't see anything. Okay, and now you can see it's going to happen one more time. The decimal point is going to be here. Now we're going to end up with 54 thousandths. Okay, so this is going to give us 0 0.054. The important takeaway here on this particular place value chart is that the digits will move to the right one place value because they're be being divided into smaller units. Now, what pattern do you notice in the placement of the decimal when we look at that? Yeah, we just kind of talked about it. The decimal point, when the digits are moving to the right, the decimal point didn't change in the sense that the decimal place didn't move. We moved the digits around the decimal point. So let's go ahead and look at another problem. I like that what I really, really love about Engage New York is what they're doing is they're, they're allowing us to really analyze and reason. Well, here's our, our learning target, to reason about the placement of the decimal point. We're using the same digits, and so the same digits being used as examples helps us see what's happening with the numbers. Now, I wonder, how does this problem look any different than the others that we've been looking at? We have 54 divided by 90. Well, first thing I'm thinking is, 54 divided by 9 equals 6. Okay, I'm seeing the simple facts. You may see that too. The simple facts stand out. We're still dividing by with tens, right? Because we have 90. So it's still we're dividing with tens. But there are 9 tens now rather than 1 10. And that's one big difference that, that we can see. Now our divisor this time is 90. I think now what we could do is we could actually decompose 90 with 10 as a factor. I know, big word on decompose. Decompose kind of, I kind of think of decompose kind of break down, take apart, and that's what we're really doing here. I'm going to look at that 90 and, I'm, and I say, yeah, 90 is 10 times 9. So I'm going to rewrite this problem, kind of re reflect a little bit of that thinking. So I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to put 54 divided by 90 is equal to 54 divided by 90. 10 divided by 9. Remember, that's because we looked at the 90 and we said, you know, 90, that's 10 times 9. That's what that is. We decompose 90 to show it as 10 times 9. So what I'm doing here is I'm breaking it apart and showing 54 then divided by 10, okay, and then divided by 9. Now we're just looking at this and saying, okay, well, then what is 54 then divided by 10? We just did that problem a little while ago. You may even remember. Remember, the digits move to the right. So if my decimal point is right after the 4 here, which there's that invisible decimal point, then my digits need to shift one place value to the right. Now I have 5 and 4 tenths, but I already divided the 10, so now I'm just going to put in my divided by 9, because I already did this part right here. So are we finished? No, we're not done yet, because we still need to divide that 9. So now we have to take 5 and 4 tenths and divide it by 9. So I'm going to rename this equation as not as 5 and 4 tenths divided by 9, but I'm going to rename it as 54 tenths divided by 9. And this is the written method that's referred to in our learning target. We're making connections to a written method. And you might quickly say, whoa, 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 Mr. War, how'd you get the tenths? I don't get that. And all I did was, I know that I have 4 tenths up here, up above, and I know that there's 10 tenths in every hole. 
So 10 tenths lets me know that that would be 50 tenths. Then I have the 4. So 5 and 4 tenths is the same as 54 tenths. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve. And I can see that this is really easy because we have simple facts. So my answer is going to be 6 tenths. So it's interesting. When we factored our divisor up above as 10 times 9, the steps we took were first that we divided by 10. Then we divided by 9. Now I'm wondering, would our quotient be affected if we divided by 9 and then divided by 10? No, I mean, it would matter because what we're still doing is we're still dividing by 90 either way. 9 times 10 and 10 times 9 are both equal to 90. We know that because of the commutative property. And 54 divided by 10 times 9, that product of that, is going to be the same. doesn't change. Our divisor wouldn't change. So the quotient wouldn't change. So that does not affect that at all. Let's look at another problem. Okay, so now I have 5 and 4 tenths divided by 90. Again, we have that divisor as a factor of 10 and a factor of 9. 90 is 10 times 9. Very, very important to understand that because now what I can do is I'm going to rewrite my problem 5 and 4 tenths divided by 10 divided by 9. Again, I broke those apart. Well, the divided by 10 is nice and easy. And please keep in mind, you can always use your place value chart if that helps you divide by 10, you can use your place value disks, like what we did in the very first problem, to help you out with these. So in this case, the digits are going to shift one place value to the right because it's being divided by 10, which means I'm going to have, and I like to put the zero in front. I don't think it's required, but it makes it really recognizable that you have a decimal point there. So 54 hundredths then divided by 9. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and continue with my problem. But first, I'm going to go ahead and rename my units. It looks like I have hundreds there, so I'm going to rewrite my units. I'm going to rewrite 54 hundreds, again, because there's 54 hundreds here, divide by 9. And now I have my simple facts, so my answer is going to be 6 hundreds. Is this easy? I like it. I like it. Da -da -da -da. Please. Get it together, my friend. Let's look at yet another problem again. Same digits. Now we're taking the, the quotient we just had, our 54 hundredths, is now acting as our dividend. And it's just the shift of those digits changing the place value. So again, we can decompose this number as 10 times 9. Okay, And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and do what I've been doing. I'm going to take my 54 hundredths. I'm going to divide by my 10. Then I'm going to divide by my 9. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and the digits are again going to shift one place value to the right. The digits shift to the right, okay, and other understanding is the decimal point moves to the left. It means the same thing if this is confusing you, you know. Keep that in mind. Engage New York prefers to show it on a place value chart, which I think is extremely helpful. Let's you know by not changing that, it shows you how the digits are actually moving from left to right. So in this case, now I have... 54 thousandths now divided by 9. I can rewrite this as 54 thousandths divided by 9. Now that I've actually renamed this, now this is tricky because 54 divided by 9, again, actually maybe this isn't tricky. I thought this was going to be tricky. It's not tricky. So our answer is going to be 6 thousandths. Okay, now we have yet another problem. 54 divided by 900. Oh, look at what's different now. It looks very different. It does. We have, wow, we have two factors of 10 now in the number 900. We could still decompose this, and maybe we want to just go straight and say, well, the 900 is really 9 times 100, or 100 times 9. So we have two factors of 10 in that number now. Well, we're going to take the same steps here. By decomposing that number, we can say 54 divided by, and this time, 100 divided by 9. Now, 54 divided by 100 means that those digits are going to shift to place value, right, to the right, giving us 54 hundredths. That's what happens when you divide that by 100. And now we have divided by 9. We still have our same simple facts, but we're going to go ahead and rename that now as 54 hundredths. And 54 hundredths divided by 9, yeah, is going to equal, haven't been putting my in, 6 hundredths. And you guys we're good at rewriting this now. Six hundredths, I think, is written like this in the standard form. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, do we have any more? We do. Oh, my goodness. Now we have the decimal, okay, in the dividend this time. Again, we're going to decompose our number. And this might be a good one to actually put the video on pause, solve on your own now, 
and then come back and take a look at the video. What do you think? Hey? So I'm going to revisit our learning target. It says divide decimal dividends by multiples of 10. A very important concept. Reasoning about the place value, we looked at that, what happened with the decimal point, how it was placed in the actual number itself. And of course, we made a connection to the written method where we were renaming our units. So my friends, yes, it has come to an end. It is another math video. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Usually I'm crying. Oh, I'm okay. Woo, there's my stag guy. Hey, what's up? So, yeah. Oh, so that was you. I knew that was you. Oh, I could just tell by that stare you gave me. You looked up at me just like that. Oh, my goodness. And maybe it has something to do with a little tattoo that you had right there, too. Yeah, no, just kidding. Hey, you know what? That is so cool. Well, you know what, my friend? I hope we meet on the trails again, too. And for the rest of you guys, please don't worry about Mr. Warai. He is just really acting weird right now. My friends, hey, it's been a great opportunity to do some fun math with you guys. Now, live long and prosper. Thank you.